What's up everybody, this is Brandon Lee Salazar on the air. How are you guys all doing today? Today, I will be giving you my thoughts on Star Wars The Book of Boba Fett. And also, we're going to be getting into what I'd really like to see in Season 2 if the show gets renewed. So without further ado, let's begin, shall we? Episode 1 was excellent to me because of the flashbacks that Boba Fett had while sleeping and the back to tank. Especially with how he survived Zarlacc Pit. And how he lost his armor before Cobb Van acquired it. When I saw young Boba Fett, I noticed that some the shots from Star Wars Attack of the Clones of him looking at his father's helmet were reshot in some ways. So I was a little bit surprised when I noticed that it was reshot. But overall, for episode one, I'll I give this one. An eight. <laughs> Episode two was very good with the twins to happen to be cousins of Job of the Hut, along with the Wookiee Gladiator Black Chrysanthemum. Or however you pronounce his name. I don't know how to pronounce his name for the Wookiee Gladiator. But all I can say is that he was adapted from the official canon comics to the live action form. And of course I also liked the train heist where the Tusken Raiders were riding speeder bikes. I'll give this one a... A 9.5 out of 10 stars! <laughs> Episode 3 was good, but it could have been a little bit more better. For example, the character Drash looks almost like Arden Lin from the Star Wars Legends video game, Star Wars Masters of Tereskashi. So if that's the case, then I'd really like to see her have more backstory to show how she was named Arden Lin and how she ended up becoming part of the Street Gang later on. So I'll give this episode a... Uh, Six point five out of ten stars. <laughs> Episode four was very good be to me because of how Boba Fett found Fennec Shand dying on the sands of Tatooine and how she was reborn with some modifications. So yeah, I mean, that was a really good explanation on how he found her. I also liked how they were able to get Boba Fett's ship back from Jabba the Hutt. I mean, from J Jabba's palace. Surprisingly, I didn't know that the Sarlacc was still alive in that episode until it woke up after a Han Solo shot it when it should have been dead. <laughs> Chewie, give me the gun! Uh -huh. Don't move, Lando! Oh wait, I thought you were flying! It's all right, I can see a lot better. Don't move! I'm a little higher! I'm a little higher! <laughs> Chewie, pull some! Yeah. But anyway, episode four, I give this episode
Uh, 9.5! Now, episode 5 was very good with the return of Din Djarin, also known as the Mandalorian. I can bring you in warm. Or I can bring you in cold. And how he got a new ship. Plus, he also took it for a test flight in Baker's Canyon. Sounds pretty rad and cool. So for that episode, I give it a 9.5 out of 10 stars. Now, episode 6 was my very most favorite episode out of the series. With Luke Skywalker training Grogu. And even mentioning Yoda. I want to tell you about someone you remind me of a great deal. He was small like you, but his heart was huge, and the force was strong in him. He would speak in riddles. Plus, I also liked the return of Ahsoka and R2-D2. As well, but what really worried me was which path Grogu would take. The Mandalorian wanted you to have this. Before you take it, this is a lightsaber. It belonged to my teacher, Master Yoda. And now, I'm offering it to you. But you may choose only one. If you choose the armor, you'll return to your friend, the Mandalorian. But if you choose the lightsaber, you will be the first student in my academy. Which do you choose? And I'm glad Luke Skywalker was, was used well once again, just as he was in the Mandalorian season two. I give this episode a 10! <laughs> episode 7, however... I don't mean to be the breaker of bad news, but it was just very disappointing to me. I thought Grogu would either pick the path of a Jedi or 
both paths. But it turns out he didn't. Plus, I thought maybe Han Solo and Chewbacca were going to appear in the Book of Boba Fett and give Boba Fett an offer. Who was the original host? A bounty hunter called Jango Fett. And where is this bounty hunter now? Oh, we keep him here. Apart from his pay, which is considerable, Fett demanded only one thing. An unaltered clone for himself. Curious, isn't it? Unfortunately, that did not happen either. I'm sorry guys, but... For me, personally, I would have to rate this episode... 1 out of 10 stars! Now then, here are the top six things of what I'd really like to see in the second season of Star Wars The Book of Boba Fett. Number six, Grogu's continuation at Luke's Jedi Temple. Even though he chose the path of the Mandalorian and has a great attachment to Din Djarin, I really want... Grogu to go back to Luke's Jedi Temple to continue his training. And that's all I have to say about that one. Number five. Have more screen time. I really wish that there was more screen time of what's going on in the present. At the same time with the flashbacks. For example, I really want to see more flashbacks of Boba Fett's darker past when he tried to kill Mace Windu in, in the second season of Star Wars The Clone Wars for, for the murder of Jango Fett. Not to mention his service while in the Empire. I want them alive. No disintegration. As you wish. Number four, more episodes. I really want to see more episodes in the second season than there were in the first season. With a much more longer running time, like an hour or something. Number three, scene legacy characters. I really want to see Han Solo, Chewbacca, Maz Kanata, Mace Windu, Captain Brex, Worf, Harrison Della and Leia Organa Solo in the second season of the Book of Boba Fett. But for further flashbacks, I really want to see a flashback of Boba Fett when he officially started working for the Empire, being led by Darth Vader and his apprentice, Starkiller, that would lead to a connection and directly right into Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2. And I, and I know what you're going to say, but... And I know that what you're going to say that Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2 is already in production. Yeah, I understand. But I'm just pointing that out. In my opinion. But hey, what do I know? Number two. More characters from Star Wars Legends. Alright, I know I've already mentioned this, but... I really want to see more of Dresha's backstory of her real name being revealed as Arden Lynn, a character from Star Wars Legends called Star Wars Masters of Terrascashi. In addition, I also want to see other Star Wars Legends characters that could be potential Jedi in Luke's Jedi Temple, like Mar Jade. Kyle Katarn, Lobaka, and a whole lot more. And number one, my most top one pick of what I really want to see in the book of Boba Fett season two is Boba Fett getting cloned by the New Republic. Now, 
I know what you're thinking. The cloning facility on Kamino was was destroyed by the Empire. Yes, I know. But if you take a look at Star Wars The Bad Batch carefully, you'll see like another cloning facility where Cad Bane and Fennec Shan faced off to, in, the, in that one cloning facility that has been abandoned for so long. The reason for this is because I'm sure Boba Fett would love to preserve his father's legacy by having an unmodified clone for himself and Fennec Shan. So that's my review on Star Wars The Book of Boba Fett and my top six things that I would like to see in it.